Hello everyone, Tony and Tiny Fish Printing here in Rochester, New York. MNR. Hello, MNR team. <laughs> Come on in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here we are. So we're having a little party, but here's our new showroom. Basically the Bella Campus. Uh, basically the Bella Campus wall of awesomeness. Come on down, we got a bar. We're going to our events. We're going to do all kinds of events in here. We got our Screen printing wall of fame. Cards are falling. The kids are pulling the parts off the wall already, but all the various Newman frames and statics and stencils and clamps that we use in the shop. How awesome was it spray painting all those? It was fun. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of hours. I painted the whole building and the floor, so it was a lot of hours. A lot of we bought this building had no roof. So we spent the last year and a half putting. Well, I saw it before. On, yeah, getting all this ready. Yeah, it's a um, huge difference. The sales. This is gonna be the sales team in here. So they're gonna be in here doing their sales thing. Going on through, we got which will be some of the bigger part of the work that we're getting into, like everybody else doing fulfillment, online stores, managing online stores for brands. So and then we go into production. Cross the path. So this will be fun in the winter. So here is production. We're in the middle of construction. We got four autos, one manual, a rapid tag, a uh, folder bagger, all M and R, two two gas dryers. I think this one's 20 foot or 16 foot. I can't remember anymore. But uh, we got a 16 color. We got the 12 color. We got an eight color in the corner, and then we got a 12 color here. We did a screen printing class in here. So we normally do our screen printing class in here. We set it up. We just teach people kind of the basics, the overview. So we set up some clamps on tables and let them just kind of come in. But they, they left their prints everywhere, so kind of chaos. What were you guys printing? We just had 16 screens of various like icons, little pumpkin heads, patterns, and we just kind of let them print on bags paper. or shirts or paper? For, yeah, paper products here. So you can see people left their prints kind of everywhere. Well, we do a lot of the simulator process stuff, so stuff like this, for our good friends at Fright Rags, 14 color. Yeah, so this is kind of our shipping and receiving right now. We, because of the party, we just jammed everything in here. But shirts come in, get counted, sorted. Here's sample rack. So if we have a shirt that we know we're going to be printing again, or any item that we're going to be printing again, actually, here's that one you just saw. We hold on to it, and we keep a sheet, call out the colors. And then on the back, we have the print order. So under base squeegee. So if we used all hard squeegees or soft squeegees, how many pulls, the angle of the squeegee, the speed that we used it, the pressure we printed it, and the mesh it was on. So that when we go to the next job, we know we're gonna get the same exact print over and over again. Right. Because no one wants one to be one way and another the other way. But yeah, all full color, kind of full color stuff. Um, let's see, there's a couple in here. Oops, probably my favorites. A lot of uh, underbase, discharge underbases with plastic on top. These I thought came out really good. Kind of more, I like the more subdued color ones. Yeah, the ones that fade into the shirt. Yeah, little. just a little fade in. PJ Souls, my girl. Um, there she is. That's awesome. Uh, but again, just this actually, this was one we've done over a couple of years. And it's been nice because every time we get to dial it in a little more. But I th really That's was the one happy you posted with it. about the face differently. Yeah, right? I was really percent. happy with the way the face came out on this one. Real soft. Um, this was always a cool one. That's it. You know, a lot of high color, high high color, simulated process, discharge under this. This machine right here, definitely one of the best pieces of equipment we bought. Um, I highly recommend it to anyone. Instantly replaced someone on our team. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Instantly allowed someone on our team to be used elsewhere in the production process. Um, we had someone, at this point, we were running about 140 screens a day, where they were just hosing high, high half-tone stuff, power washing, making sure stencils, and to develop the stencils. And they were yeah. basically all day doing that but now we can put in four screens at a time. We set it up in a little bit of a circle here. So we'll go right from the CTS. We'll take it right from the CTS. Load into the metal halide for about 15 seconds. Pop on the metal halide. 
15 seconds, take it out, put four screens in here, take them from here, put them right into our drying racks, drying racks right around to this table we, we had built for uh, taping. So we normally have another tape on here for the other direction. So tape one way, tape the other way. So we got the, uh, the new gong with 16 color. It's been great. Uh, leaves a lot of room for flattening screens, flashes, uh, runs like butter. Have no problem registering things in. Tri locks up real nice. Holds registration real nice. Yeah, yeah do you want your Rochester? Yeah. 73,000 pieces on it, no problem. Uh, we're gonna swap out our Challenger now for one of these just because it's, it's running so much smoother and helping production out so much. We love the MR equipment, it's really easy to maintain. Uh, these prints, these presses all have millions of prints on them before we ever owned them. And the most we ever really ever have to fix is like a couple of switches here and there. But they run really well. That being said, the new technology that MNR has put out in this Gauntlet 3, as far as the pallets not coming out and the speed that it indexes, has really helped uh, increase production without stressing the printers out which is really nice. I mean, just the other day, I think we set up a four color front, 500 shirts, and a four, and also had a four color back, same 500 shirts. And we did the whole job in an hour and a half. So 400, 500 front, four color set up, print, back, tear down, put up, you know, three people working to keep it moving, but we were able to get it all set up, printed and out the door. All right, here we go. So this is the folder and bagger, which we got, and I was very skeptical of for a while until I saw it in action, in production. This we also just got a few months ago and we've already run 40,000 pieces through a fold and bag with only two people working in this department. There was times where we would have six, seven, eight people in here trying to fold and bag projects. Uh, again, I was very skeptical until I got it in production. We've had very little problems with it. Well, we've had zero problems with it and the staff has really been able to pick it up and learn every, every little hiccup if you load a, a shirt wrong. It's been real easy to get people up to speed on. Lucky for us, we got the bagger all hooked up because we just ran a project. When we don't, we run it with just folding. We move the bagger out of the way, no big deal. Here we go. have had our busiest week ever last week. We ran 22,000 shirts, folded bag, barcode hang tags, and I cannot exaggerate, if it was not for this machine and an additional 10 people coming in to help us out, we've never made it through this week. The shop was filled every inch of the shop. Uh, it looks like chaos right now because it was chaos all week, and this machine was probably one of the main pieces of helping us get it done, especially going to retail stuff. Uh, they require so much with the sorting and packing and post-processing. This, if we hadn't got this machine this year, it would have been, a, we would, it would, it would, it would we, I wouldn't be speaking right now. We'd be here still folding. <laughs> still shirts. folding and bagging. Yeah. We, we did uh, the most shirts we've ever done this week and fulfilled, processed them, bagged them, sorted them, tagged them, and everyone mostly got out of here on time every single day. We probably only had I personally had maybe 10 hours of overtime this week. Just getting here a little early to get things set up and leaving a little late just making sure things were set up for the next day. But without this production, this, this folder bagger would never have happened. Yeah. So go back there. It's all their jobs for the day are on this rack or on this rack. Normally it doesn't look like total hell here, but all the ink for their day is here. So when they come up, it's all the ink is here. All the screens are here. They're just set, working on setting up. If for some reason we need to hold on to a screen for a job, it might stay near their press, like these all here or things that we're holding on to, tags, like Wegmans one. Um, but that's it. They're, they're, they're not walking back and forth to the ink department. They're not cleaning their own squeegees. They're breaking down. When they are done with a job, a third person comes over from the ink department, helps them break down the press. We'll get, we'll get the, they have a whole new set of squeegees here ready to go. And we're just working on getting so those So you have a guy guys. just cleaning squeegees and? It's the one. ink guy. 
and the screen guys, they kind of team up. So as presses are coming down, the production manager says, hey, press three is coming down. You'll have two people come over to the press. And like on these 16 color jobs or 14 color jobs, we'll have four people just take all the screens out, take all the screens out. And as they're doing that, the two people, the two press operators are now getting ready and setting up the next job. And these guys now have transferred everything over to here and are scraping yeah. the ink, scraping the carding, we're turning ink to the ink station. And yep. this press operator just setting up job after a job. After yeah, so many more screens and squeegees and flow bars and you're doing 14, 16 colors all the time. That's the biggest. And maintenance <laughs> on the presses is the other one. Like, just making sure, like, this week was so crazy. Like, normally we're like, hey, you, you can't leave this ink. Like, everyone was so busy this week, we just didn't even notice. But, like, next week, Monday, we'll come in, we'll start wiping this place back down, cleaning everything, I'm picking the tape off the floor. Yeah. The screen washer. This thing is awesome. Machine can go either direction. We tend to run it in this direction. Oh, really? Yeah. You can, you can get this to that end and then load screens there and set it back this way. So you can set the formulas based on the type of screens you're using. So you go into your recipes. We've been working on dialing these in. We pick the, we have, if it's just emulsion, we have if it's a 110 or a 155, a 200, a 305. Or finish cycle. Sometimes we just we're, we're too busy. We're throwing back in on kind of a finishing, where we've turned off various aspects. So here I'm going to load the 110 recipe, load the screens. Oh, it's already hit, so it's waiting for us. So we load it in. We have had success running it all the way down to four minutes. Pop it. Pull the pin out. Pull the squeegee out, wipe the squeegee, put it back in, or swap to a different squeegee. This, this has been a lifesaver for the cleaning process for our fingers. I used to bump all my knuckles and stuff on the on Yeah, the I bolts. didn't even think about the bolts. The bolts, people. The bolts. We're cleaning <laughs> squeegees all day. Squeegees and flood bars. So having that smooth surface to wipe makes it a dream, especially when you combine it with one of those things. Sure. Once the squeegee's clean, they'll just check it. They'll see if they can feel their fingerprints on it. If they can't feel a fingerprint on either of the sides, he'll just lock it in and cycle it, take it out, whatever it is, five minutes or so, and just feel it. So this is our art department. They'll have, they have all the Pantones kind of specifications. We, we drew it all out. Like, hey, if it's static, this is the printable area. If it's this, it's printable area. Same thing, all our common locations, where it goes, kind of the specifications of it. And then again, our house colors. So the so. next two years here is just optimize this space. Yeah. Optimize every inch of this space. And it's all stuff like that. Let's get box fans with, with filters on them. Let's do more of these boxes around on top and just catch as much of that organic solvents and just lint and smells and just get it captured. Yeah. My tip for any new shop is you need more space than you think you need. You need more power than you think you need. We have, this is our third, second shop and second point too because we started in half of this shop we took over the whole space but when we were looking we weren't really even thinking about the power this building has 400 amps and all this equipment here runs on a lot of power and we've already maxed out our power so luckily for us we were able to buy the building next door and add a couple hundred amps of power but aside from that just finishing sewing folding bagging relabeling whatever you're needing shirts when you're doing hoodies double-sided takes up all the tables takes up all your room and you may be the most efficient shop you know, but you just need room to like maneuver the pallets, move and over whatever it is. Even when, it's, even when you're in a small shop, we always found having a little extra room just made things that much more efficient. So yeah. room, power, that's what it's all about.